My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Win Today with your boy, Johnny Martin. It's great to have everybody back with us. As always, I want to introduce my co-producers of the show and very, very good friends from Seven Roads Media, Donnie Cavanaugh. How are you, Donnie? I'm good, John. How are you? Life is good, man. How was your trip to the West Coast? Welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be back. Uh, great trip. Got a ton of great information out of it. And the best information, I think, for Dylan and I is that we're moving to San Diego. Yeah, man. I, I was out there uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, Pacific Beach area. Uh, and I'll tell you what, it was breathtaking. I've been, to the, phenomenal. West, I've been to the West Coast before, never to San Diego. And it was, uh, it was something else, man. Yeah, we had a great time. And my other my other co-producer of the show from Cloud9 Marketing Group. What's up, Dylan Pilon? How are you, man? I'm doing well, Johnny. How are we doing? Life is good. Welcome back. All right. Well, glad to be back. Same takeaways for you from San Diego, man? Yeah, it was intense, man. It was, uh, it was like three days, nonstop conferences all day. A lot of the best minds in marketing from all around the world. There was roughly 4,200 people there. It was, it was a sight to see. Wow. Wow. Was it at like a, did you guys do it at like a convention center or something? Yeah, the San Diego Convention Center right there in, in downtown San Diego. It was a, a beautiful facility. They just redid some of it. It was a great venue. Check it out if you ever have a chance to catch a show, a conference. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I want to get rolling right away here, guys, because uh, I am very, very excited to have uh, a friend of mine in studio uh, with an amazing journey, an amazing story to tell. And as always, the goal of this program is remains the same. We want to inspire other people to tap into their talents, strengths, and gifts to write their own story. I'm super excited to welcome my good friend, Julio Rivera, into the show. What's up, Julio? Hey, what's up, man? Thank you for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you for being here. And Julio brought uh, a friend of his with him in. We got our man, Ian Garcia, with us as well. What's up, Ian? What's up? Great to meet you. Thanks so much for being here. Let me give you a little bit of background on Julio before we start, before we start to talk to you, pal, because I, I think... For those people that have grown accustomed to listening to the show, I want them to understand a little bit about your background, and then certainly I'm sure you'll get into it as we go. I met Julio a couple of years ago through a mutual friend, and uh, the, the friend explained to me, you know, sort of a little bit of Julio's story, his upbringing, uh, his life, but also that he was a very, very accomplished fighter, a boxer. And uh, one of the things that always resonates with me, guys, is that when I meet people and you know right away that this dude is is destined to do great things. And I, when I met you the first time, Julio, I said to Coach, when he introduced me to you, I'm like, man, that, that dude is somebody special. He's going to do great things. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and as you know, we've had a chance to, to meet a lot since that time, talk about life, kind of your business and where we're headed. Um, and I, I really wanted to bring you on today because I think so much of how, so much of how you're trying to live your life uh, can resonate with the people that are listening and they can, they will have a real good understanding of, you know what, man, I, I can do all of the things that I set out to do despite what my past may have been like, despite what my, the obstacles that may have been thrown in my way. Um, so, so I, I want people to, to take what you will as always from this episode, but I hope somebody out there is listening that can in some way connect with Julio's story and look at themselves and say, you know what, man, maybe, maybe this sounds a lot like what I'm, what I'm dealing with right now. And, and look at where this cat is at right now. A big congratulations to Julio as we get started. Uh, for those of you that don't uh, know who Julio is, we'll give you all of his contact information at the end of the show. But for Donnie and Dylan, I think I told you guys this before we started, Julio is now no longer an amateur fighter. He is a professional uh, fighter, and he'll be making his debut in uh, just a few short months. So, congratulations on Thank turning you. I pro, man. That, man! Unbelievable, long journey, right? Yeah, very long journey. Yeah. So uh, let's let's get into that, and let's talk about that as we start the show. Uh, you know, I know you're uh, approaching. You know, you're in your late twenties, approaching thirty. Um, just turned professional. Tell me a little bit. You know, sort of about what got you here, and not just in boxing, but give us a little idea of those of us that are listening and my friends that are listening where you're from, um, kind of how you got into the game of boxing, uh, and where it's taken you since. Just a, kind of a quick background. Well, I was, I was born here in Springfield, Mass. Uh, you know, I have a family that love boxing. Basically, my whole family was a boxing background. Yeah. Whatnot. Uh, 
I started off playing baseball, you know, basketball for what it just wasn't tough enough. You know, <laughs> so so I'm a sore loser, so I, I'll you know, I'll blame the losses to, to everybody, you know, you know, as, as a teammate, you shouldn't be doing that, but sure. you know, I just love winning so but much. But it speaks a lot to your personality yeah, too. So yeah. you know, one day I told my dad, like, listen man, I I wanna try something individual. You know, if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna blame it on myself. I don't have to point fingers and stuff. So he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to box. How old were you roughly when this started for you, you think? i say 10, 11 years old. So you were... I started at 12. I, I laced up at 12. So and really committed to it at, at 12 yeah, years old. Yeah, 12 years old. I started fighting and, and I told my dad, this, this is what I want to do. Was know? he was he your first trainer? Uh, he he gave me the boxing knowledge. He fought amateur himself. And that's the yeah. whole family background piece. Yeah, exactly. your Father, uncles, yeah. stuff like that. So, um... My first boxing trainer was Marvin Pushan. Uh, you know, he's still a resident of Springfield, Mass. Uh, good dude. You know, uh, he does real estate and stuff. So shout yep. out to uh, Marvin Pushan. Uh, but then um, I told my dad, listen, if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose, you know, by, by myself. I'm, I'm, I'm in the ring by myself. I got somebody I'm, you know, going to war with. Sure. So. You know, I took it as a challenge. I, I, I literally took it as a challenge ever since 12. You know, I, I run the toughness all the way to the, you know, the teens, the 20s. Yeah. And from there, I said, listen, I, I got a shot. And nobody could stand toe-to-toe with me in the score circle. I, I have the uh, God-gifted ability, you know, to sit there and exchange, exchange shots, excuse me. And um, I'm, I'm just got gifted all around so but I, there's there's got to be more to it though because there's so many guys and I, I feel like especially in boxing there's that that swagger that comes with boxing but oh. there's there's so many guys out there and women out there that have gotten into this sport that have uh, a lot of god gifted ability mm -hmm. and one of the things we talk about a lot on the show is that there's there's a ton of people out there in a lot of different sports or professions where they're, they're given gifts right mm -hmm. And, and but they never maximize them. They never harness them. And so not, it sounds to me like not only did you realize from a young age that you had some gifts, but also that you were willing to put the work in to harness those gifts. Yeah, it's just not a part time job. You got to is full time. You have to run every morning. Uh, you know, you have to dedicate yourself. It's either boxing or nothing. You know, you have to stick to boxing. You just can't go, oh, let's go play basketball one have, day. Have basketball. you found that it's one of those sports that the guys and gals that you've seen that have gotten really good reached your level as being a, a professional fighter? Have you found that unless they commit to it almost completely, they'll never be able to to keep climbing in boxing? No, it's full time, like I said. Yeah. You got you to sit there and dedicate yourself. Uh, sometimes you have to not starve, but you got to watch what you eat. Sure. You can't really eat what you want. You know what I mean? Day in, day out. As an amateur, I had to watch my weight, you know, and, and eat healthy. Sure. You know, because it takes a lot of stamina away from me. If you, if you, doesn't, like you, you don't eat healthy at all. For anybody that's listening to this conversation right now that's never boxed before, uh, and Julio uh, and Ian could definitely give you guys some better tips than me, but for those of you that have never boxed or put a pair of boxing gloves on and you think you're in shape, okay, so like... I'm one of those guys you all know that, listen, I love to train. I love to work out. But if you think you're in shape, go into a boxing gym or even easier, if you're sort of uncomfortable doing that because a lot of people are, go to a gym or go to a heavy bag, put a, put a pair of boxing gloves on and just keep moving your hands for 60 seconds. Just move your hands for 60 seconds and you will very quickly be humbled and realize that you're probably not in the type of shape that you think you're in. How often do you see that at your gym, man? <laughs> I see that a lot. Right? I mean, there, there was, can I tell you a quick story? Please, please. Uh, about a week ago or so. Uh, I want, uh, first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my business partner, uh, Jose Ortiz. His nickname is Yayo. He's the one that runs the gym with me. Awesome. You know, he started at Agawam and then he, he invited me to be his business partner. So I want to be in this position if it wasn't for him. Beautiful. You know, so I, I, I thank him from the bottom of my heart. You know, and um, last week, you know, the gym was packed, ready to go. And, I, and I'm and I'm training or whatever. I'm jump roping and I see this kid that's come out of nowhere. You know, tall kid, you know, ripped and stuff like that. 
and uh, he lived in Enfield. Our boxing gym was located in Enfield. Yeah, just for, for those of you that are listening, and we're going to get to it later on, but Julio is the co-owner of uh, Old School Boxing Gym uh, in Enfield, Connecticut, and we will share, uh, for those of you that live uh, in the Western Mass, Northern Connecticut area, we will share the information for Old School Boxing uh, in Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, but go go ahead, continue with the story. So uh, he he uh, he told my business partner, he was like, yeah, I just want to come in. I don't want to sign up or nothing. I just want to check know, it out. I just want to spar. I want to fight. I'm, I'm pretty mad today, you know. So before I do something, you know. I can honestly, already tell this was a bad idea. So I, I guess I guess he was arguing with his girl or something. So... You know, he he goes. I want to spar. I want. I want to. I want to hit something. So he challenged Yayo, Jose, my business, my my business partner. Now hold on. Before you get there, though, paint the picture for us. How, how tall would you say this dude was? This dude was about six three. My business partner is about not six feet. Like I, I say, five seven, five seven in. So five seven or so. Wow, I love. But, it. But, I love where this is going. Right but then now. again, but then again, you know, Yayo's in his forties. Jose. Sure. You know, and and he was a pro before. You know what I mean? So he's he, been in the he's game still, a long time. He still got the the experience, even though he's not in shape. He's a fighter. So they they throw in right whatever they go in, they gear up and stuff, and the dude's ready, pumping his gloves or whatever, hitting him. So I'm like, oh man, this this is not good. <laughs> Took one shot. The dude said, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> the whole gym started crying, laughing, yelling, and from there on. Like he quit, he quit after this, I think mid second round. Yeah, because the culture, right? The culture yeah. of a boxing gym is different, right? Yeah, it's been my experience, and I I don't have any in boxing, but my older brother Stevie, who you know, Julio, um, and and uh, you know Duff and some some of the other guys, a lot of dudes that I know, have experimented with it, and and one of the things that I've heard, uh. And you could speak to this. You've been in them your whole life. But one of the things I heard, the culture of a boxing gym is a little bit different in, yeah. in that you walk through the doors. And if you walk through the doors with humility and an eagerness to learn, one of the things that I, I love what I've heard about the sport is that how much money you have, the color of your skin, We're very religion, humble. none of it matters. If you, if you show up willing to do the work, anybody will work with you. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I love that because it, you know, it flies in the face of everything that we hear about what's going on in this country today where there's... You know, it's black and Hispanic and white. And, uh, you know, in sports is the one place I've found where none of that stuff matters. And I think boxing is even different because if you walk in there, I, and I'm sure in your experience, you've trained with uh, Hispanic guys, white guys, black guys, yes, Asian guys, and everybody in between. But the goal is the same, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the kid the kid after afterwards was like, listen, I'm not trying boxing ever. Like in my <laughs> life, like you know, this is not for me. He took one shot. You, you're not in good shape, and one shot could just snap you That's out right. of it. You know, like people gotta understand, you have to be in top shape, even if you're sparring. Like I sparred today. I'm not. In, I'm just getting back into shape. Sure. But my experience took over. Of course. Versus you know, a young amateur. Yeah. You know, I didn't show fatigue. I didn't. Show, it's just experience. Yeah, everything you know that I mean? you've conditioned your body to do. Yeah, and, and through throughout the years, you know what I mean. It's just like. You know, like a barbecue. Let's sure. go out and put out the gloves and do whatever we want. You know it's, what I mean? It's no different for you than the guy who goes into the gym and laces up his high tops and grabs yeah. a basketball. I, I advise if you want to take boxing, please, before you get in that ring, be in the best shape ever. Yeah, that's great advice. Speaking of of uh, Julio's, you know, when he was talking about just sort of the mental piece kicks in. Um, he has an amateur record. He had it had. He's no longer an amateur. He's a professional now. Had an amateur record of sixty-seven and twelve over nine years. I mean, so that's forget all of the training and everything else aside. Almost eighty times stepped into the ring with another human being as an amateur. Um, how much of that preparation do you think you feel like has gotten you so ready to take on that next challenge as a professional fighter? Amateurs more. For the for the pros, if I say it gets you ready, the experience. Um, if you think you're gonna, you're gonna fight amateur and think you're gonna fight eighty or more fights, probably fifty or more fights. Sure. And you're gonna leave undefeated. It's, it, it won't happen. It's not gonna happen. A la Floyd Mayweather. Sure. Lost four or six times as amateur. You know, it's, it's experience. You pick it up and you bring that experience to the pros. You know what I mean? So. Once you have that experience, 
the pro game is different. Sure. It's not like you got three rounds to do what you got. You know, you got to, exp- you got to, you know. You have hundreds of rounds. You got these in- judges that are clicking and clicking. Sure. You got three rounds to go. Yeah. You know. Your first pro, pro your first pro fight, how many rounds will that fight be at your It'll be four. Four rounds. Yeah. And as the rounds pick up, you get paid more four, six, eight. Sure. You know, it might be at showtime if you're six, seven, and oh, fight in showbox. Then you get a chance to get a, a bigger fight. Exactly. So for you, the pressure's really on now uh, because uh, you gotta show up as 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 new pro. I say pressure. Pressure, maybe, maybe not. I don't I don't I don't dwell on that. So where does that mindset I come like, from then? I that, like Lights, camera, action. Let's go. It's open season. Do you think that speaks to how you prepare? Basically, yeah. I'm not cocky, but I'm confident. If I feel like if I'm in there, you're gonna have to kill me. Yeah. So you know? the minds, the, the that warrior mindset. Yeah. Of, I, I'm not. You're not gonna knock me down. And if you do, you can bet your ass I'm getting. I, back I'm coming up. right back up. Gotcha. I, and and God forbid. And you know, my mom. My mom doesn't come to my fights. You I was gonna nervous. ask about mom. Yeah, but. God forbid, you know, and the man upstairs, I got hit with big shots, and I refused to hit the canvas. Yeah. As an amateur, I got hit with big shots. That's I, probably why mine doesn't go to any fights. Yeah, so she, yeah, especially my, my grandma, too. She probably just jump in the ring and try to beat the other opponent <laughs> Actually, up. you know what's funny? I saw, I don't know if you guys saw this clip. <laughs> yeah, Speak, I seen it with the see, heel. Did yeah, you see the clip? Yeah, I there was a wrestling match uh, about a month ago in um, an amateur wrestling match. Little, little kids. And this... Um, this young kid, the two young kids, amateur wrestling, one kid was getting, I mean, he was getting just destroyed on the mat. So the kid's little sister, you see the, the guy videotaping the match, and then you see this little girl run across the mat with like a book bag or something in her hand, and she just starts teeing off on this kid that's beating up her brother. So the ref's holding her in one arm, trying to separate the kids. It was the funniest, funniest clip, yeah, man. Yeah, that was funny. I see that. Julio, what do you think separates people in your game, in the boxing game? What separates those people that make it from those that don't uh, in see, boxing? I, I was I was just talking about this um, not too long ago. I posted a status on on Facebook. Um, what separates me from these kids? You know, I say kids because these kids got a lot of knowledge to still learn. Sure. You know what I mean. So, um, what separates me? I'm a ticket seller. You know, he's and, getting a little, he's getting a little selfless promo- promotion. Uh, it's, here. It's, I love uh, it. I it's love a, it. It's, um, <laughs> these kids nowadays are boring. You know what I mean? You and, mean um, as fighters or personality wise or both? Both. You know, you're boring. You, you can't sell tickets like that. You know what I mean? Um, I see, I see talent. I see a lot of talent, but the kids needs to know, uh, you have to sell tickets too. You don't sell tickets. It's a business, man. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's more of a business now. You know, now more of a business. I, I'm all about business, as you can see. And I know. And and I understand. So what separates me from, from the other fighters, and um, it sounds weird. I'm handsome. All right. <laughs> uh, this is great. I'm handsome. So, uh, you know, I can sell tickets. You know, I, I could talk and I could back it up. You know what I mean? You can't be born in the sport of boxing because every, every everyone's watching. And if... You're not entertaining anything, especially no, as a new pro. No, I mean, you yeah, got to make a name no, for yourself. No, no, nobody, nobody is going to go to your fight. You have to be inter- You have to be entertaining in training camp. You have to be anywhere you go. You have to be a seller. Sure. You know, I, I see this ki- these these guys. These these. I mean, they they have great talent. You know what I mean? But they're boring. You know, that's that's that separates. You know, I I not come back it up. You know, I could I could sit there and back it up. So what are what are some things from what are some things that boxing has given you in terms of your own life? So the stuff away from boxing, the personal stuff, the emotional uh-huh. stuff, the stuff that like what have you learned from this sport that got you through whatever you might have faced as a child? What lessons has this sport taught you that that you're grateful for? I say discipline. I was really uh I I grew up in the. Worst neighborhood in New England, according to 60 Minutes, uh, the North End in Plainfield. Um, if you go on YouTube, uh, I grew up there, and it's um, I was I wasn't, you know, an angel That's when I was yeah, young. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I I still have my friends I still interact with. Uh, I go visit them over there and stuff like that. It's, it's not the same though because I I grew up 
into a, a, a man. I have a 11 year old son. God bless him. His yeah. name is Davian. Uh, you know, it, it's more of discipline. You know, sometimes you have to run away with something you're good at. Yeah. You know, and if you could give it back to the neighborhood that you came from, that's okay. But living, uh, staying around it, you know, and, and going back and doing all the things that shouldn't be done, you know, like sure. I did before, it's tough. And and I, I I always say when it's all set and done, I want my mom to be all set in life, my dad, you know, my son, and the list goes on, you know. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's, I think it's up to me. I, I put it on my shoulders. Well, especially so, as a, as a father now, yeah, as a so, man, it's it's our responsibility yeah. to my make mom, sure we my take dad, care of our my kids. My dad, my dad really took care of me, you know, when I was young. My mom too, you know. I'm, I'm a mama's boy, so. Um, but yeah, you got that soft side, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm an emotional person. So when it's all said and done, if you really, uh, deep down inside, it, it's for it's for my family. Beautiful. Yeah, because you know sometimes I take a big shot when I'm sparring. I be like. Do I really want to do this? You know, but then again, I really want to do this. I, I enjoy the, you know, excitement, sure. you know, the light, the lights, camera action, ready to go. Let's and, the, do this. and the preparation. Yeah, for the preparation is tough. It's not easy. I think training is the hardest part, you know, but uh, when you get there and fight, that's the easiest part. You're prepared. Yeah, prepared. Let, let me ask you this. Um, what's your mindset as a fighter and as a man around failure? Why do you believe that most people don't succeed at what they set out to accomplish. We talk a lot about that on this show with a variety of guests. It's something I've spent my whole adult life counseling on, learning about. Um, and I have my own thoughts about why people fail. Uh, but I'm just curious as to what your thoughts are, are around why most people fail. Not just in boxing, because I want the listeners to understand, folks. And life. You don't have to be a boxer to resonate with this conversation. It's all around. It's, it's excuses. Excuses. You gotta sit there and, and have an excuse for what, you know that you know yeah. get up and go do something. Sure, you know whatever it is for you. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, like I told my son, you know he's really good in boxing, you know, but well, he's got the pedigree, man. Yeah, but but see, then again, I want him to be a kid, so I told him, listen, you like video games? You're not gonna sit there and play ten hours a game. I mean, t ten hours a day. Sorry, sure. excuse me. Sure. So um. You know, you want to go to college, you want to make your own video games, you know, you can yeah. succeed in that. So helping him change his mindset. Yeah, mindset, basically. You you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not going to force him to do something that he don't want. You know, I want him to be a kid. You like basketball? Go ahead and play it. You know, he's on a basketball team. Sure. By the way, uh, I want to give a, a special shout out to his team. <laughs> but they, they, they lost in the playoffs. This Saturday, he was kind of emotional. So well, now, you know. Davian's in uh, what grade is he in? Uh, he's in uh, fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yeah, he'll be in middle school next year. Awesome. Um, so you're you you are the type then that you want him to write his own story, man. You yeah. want him to go out and accomplish what he wants. Just because Daddy's a boxer doesn't mean you, you know I'm I'm like waiting for him to be a boxer too. He could do whatever he wants as long as long as he he's accomplished in life. That's okay with me. I'm yeah. a, I would be a proud father. For sure. That, you want him to be a gentleman and yeah. And, yeah. Treat people well exactly. and, and work hard. Yeah, but, but people people having excuses for not making it anywhere. I mean, shit. Excuse my language. That's but, all right. Um, it's just excuses, excuses, excuses. Like you go get up and go do what you want to do. You got to go get it. You have you have that mindset. Like, listen, I want to do this. I'm gonna go do it. All I'm right. Gonna, I'm gonna find a way to get it done. Yeah, some, something. You know, it's, you got to motivate yourself. People can't, you know. Grab your hand and be like, "All right, come on, I'm gonna help you." And don't you think that's one of the problems with the with the world we live in today is that a lot of the uh, it's handed, uh, it's handed. Half, well, half of if these, it's not handed, people expected it to be handed. Half to of them. these kids nowadays, they don't go out and get up early in the morning, make their breakfast, eat it, and then go job hunting. Man, mama knows somebody, daddy knows somebody, it, it, which is it's, it's okay, you know, a job is a job, but they don't they, they didn't work hard for it for it. Or you it's know? just gonna fall in my lap. I, yeah, I, it's expected it'll fall to in my lap. Oh, oh sure. they're hiring. Yeah, I could get you in. You know, go get it. Stop being stop being lazy. I love it. You know, it's it's a it's a message. Me as a role model, I, I got a lot of kids that look up to me, so, you know, I try not to be on Facebook a lot. Yeah, you know, because there, there's it's distracting. There's negativity. negativity. On Facebook, so it gets me like a little bit aggravated. So you know, before I, I get out my place, 
I just log out. I'm like, listen, I'm not even going to comment yeah. on this status or nothing, you know. There's people watching. People put Absolutely. you down quick. You and know and what you mean? know what? It's that old adage, man. They hate you because they ain't you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're not willing to put the time in to get the work done. One of the things we talked about, guys, on one of our other episodes was just, you know, finding your why. And if it doesn't, if any person, place, or thing stands in the way of your why, then it needs to be eliminated because you're on to try to do bigger things. Um, talk to me a little bit about your gym, buddy. The new gym, what are you doing in there for uh, younger fighters? And and then in terms of you finding your own time to get your training in, uh, tell us about the gym. This is old school gym in Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, yeah, we're located at uh, 95 High Street, Enfield, Connecticut, Molina's Plaza, by the way. Uh they got a good restaurant down the street. So so far, so far, eat. Julio has been the king of shout outs. <laughs> yeah. He has been yeah. the absolute king of shout outs. They, I love they got it. good food. Out yeah, there. they do. I've been there, yeah. man. So, um, yeah, um, I, I train in the mornings, basically. Yeah. I have the gym to myself and um, well, my trainer, my business partner, Jose. Uh, I train by myself, you know, because I don't want to train with the amateurs. It's just too much kids and stuff. I, want, I need to focus on what, you know. What I'm it's gonna business. do down the line? It's business. So um, it's your job. you know, I, I I leave the gym, I pick up my son at school, drop him off at home, spend some time, whatever, whatever, then go back to the gym to train all the kids and stuff like that. Um, it also helps, I'm sure, to get your training done in the morning so you can be focused and ready focused. for your athletes when they come in at night. Exactly, and um, you know, I deal with you know Ian Garcia, which he's next to me. One, of, he's one of my favorites, but he's oh. hard. He's hard at times, being lazy and stuff. That's so I I. I He's like, uh, he's like my eldest son. I love it. Yeah, I, I, he's under my wing, and um, he knows that I'm on him. You know, sometimes I, I get a, I get out of line, and I curse at him because he pisses me off with the talent he has, and you know, sometimes he'll come to the gym because he has, you know, his chilling with his little friends or sure, something. Sure, sure. But at the end of the day, he needs to learn. You know, the position he is it, great. He has no kids. You know, as a job, you know, he has a great mom and dad, you know, at the end of the day. All the pieces of the puzzle. That are there. talent needs to get put into work like that. So let's you know talk. I mean? Let's talk to you for a minute, Ian. First of all, thanks so much for joining Julio. Thank it's you. great to have you, you here. Yes, sir. Man. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience with with coach at the gym and um, a little bit how long you've been boxing. And and um, tell me about some of the work you're doing with Julio now at the gym. Oh, well, I've been boxing for at least, I say, for five years the most. And you're 19 now, right, buddy? Yes, sir. Um, and and you, uh, how often are you training? How often are you training now at uh, Old School Boxing Gym? I've been training with Old School for almost a year and a half um, with Julio in my corner. Um, I, I've been off a little bit, but, um, hey, I'm just a kid. I'm just learning a little bit more about life. Yeah, sure. And um, yeah. You excited to see where the see where the journey takes you? Yeah, yeah. I want to see, but I think I got to get back in the game again. Yeah, it sounds to me like the stuff that the stuff that Julio was uh, sharing with with us and with you. Uh, I saw you kind of when he was talking, and you were hearing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You were hearing it, and so he and remember, man, and and you know, sometimes, oftentimes in life, the people that love us the most they're the ones who share with us the, the stuff that's sometimes the hardest to hear and so if it comes from somebody you love and respect and he sees those those uh those strengths and those gifts in you um man i, I would say he knows what he's talking about so um i i wish you well man and i'm i'm excited to have you here but if you know if your mind and heart's telling you you got to get back in the game then I, then i would say maybe it's time to step back in because as you, as you told us before, Julio, you can't be a boxer part time. Part time. So I told him that. I, you you got to decide. I mean, what do you think, Julio? I'm six feet tall. Um, about two thirteen, two fourteen right now. Maybe I'll come in one night and step in with with my man Ian. He'll light me up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> Let it go, Johnny. Let it go. <laughs> should, I, should I should I show up? Should I show up? Or I don't want to do that. Ian got some skills. Oh, man. I know. I, I make it, listen, it'll be it'll be a good story to tell, man. I'll come in there. Listen, you got to put me in a full padded outfit. Yeah. I'm gonna come in there and maybe sweat with him a little bit. I mean, I don't mind hitting a punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. I may have to take you up on that, but listen, you got to you got to go easy on me though. I want to go in there to learn. And and who knows? I may surprise you a little bit. You oh, never yeah. know. Oh yeah, that's man. That'll be good boys. work. Yeah. What would you say? <laughs> that'll be good work. Good work. That's <laughs> right. We'll put the good work in. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, Julio, tell me kind of where you got to a place in your training and in your career where you decided, okay, it's time to make the the jump. It's time for me to to how does how does that process work for uh, a professional boxer? Or how did it work for you in your case? I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm gonna take you back to something you need to know. Back in 2013, uh, this guy I'm I'm not even gonna mention his name. You know I just didn't think he knew, you know the boxing game very well. So he's behind me and, and, and you know behind my back like want to sign me, want to sign me. This manager and I'm like. Listen, I'm, I'm still, I, I want to be, you know, I want to enjoy my life. I'm only 23 years old. I want to enjoy my life, see where it takes me. And he rolled me in, signed me for a five-year deal. But I sat there around and I said, listen, I messed up. You, you know, knew it right away. I, I knew it right away. So, um, you know, I I was supposed to turn pro in 2013. Gotcha. People don't know that. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I still got the article on my phone and, um, God told me, listen, this is not your time now, so step back. So I waited five years, you know, till the contract expired, you know, because he could he could assume if I sure. if I would have joined somebody else. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. So um, I said, listen, I'm. This is not. This is not it. He doesn't know, you know, the game very well. So um, and for you, it sounds to me like your your faith and your heart told you it wasn't yeah, the, wasn't and, the right and, fit. Yeah, it, it took some time, and I I took five years off. You know, I was like, listen, my contract expired 2018. This is it. You know, as I grew older, I got smarter. You know, I got stronger. You know, and I, I told myself, I was like, listen, this is the time now. So I reached out, you know, to my business partner, Jose, and he's like, yo, you got some skills, man. You got to go. We got to do this now. And when we talked about it, and then I'm, I'm under no contract, I'm my own boss. Sure. You know, so I represent get, yourself. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't have to, you know, I don't have to listen to my manager or promoter, whoever signed me that this is they're telling me this is your date. This is your opponent. No, I make I'm under my own circumstances. I fight when I want to fight. You know, I fight whoever I want to fight. But of course, I'm not cherry picking. If you come up a, a, a hot win, I'm coming after you because somebody's over has to go. You know, that's that's the way I think. Sure. You know, you just can't keep fighting people with, with you know, records that are not good. You're not going to show out. People are not going to look at you. So somebody's O has to go, you know, and I'm pushing for that. You know what I mean? What's it look like for you um, in terms of your first fight? You have a... Um are we talking like late spring, early summer? Are you? Are you... Uh, it, oh, it's coming! It's coming! I, I want to surprise the world. Sure. You know, people think that I'm I'm done with boxing, but I'm not. You know, I've, you know, I don't post much on Facebook. You know. Well, you're busy putting in the work. Yeah, I'm. I'm busy. I'm. I'm more focused now. So, you know, all this hard work I've been putting. I mean, I I shred, you know, quick. You know, 13 pounds three weeks. You know, best shape ever right now. So. Yeah, I'm looking good right now. I I just can't wait, you know, shut everybody up and all the doubters. And um something you don't know, but my first check, uh I'm half of it, I'm donated to the, I'm gonna donate to the homeless. Awesome. You know, man. so uh um that's that's always something I always wanted to do for my heart. You know, money comes and goes. I like, you know, I got a you know, a long career ahead of me. Sure. It's not a pay per view fight, my first pro debut. I'm I'm okay with life for at at this at this time, particular sure. time. Sure. Yeah. And uh it says a lot about I think you know who you are and, and yeah. your your understanding that you have a platform right now that you can use uh to positively change other people's lives. Uh and and for you, your passion, your purpose is boxing and so you're using that passion and purpose to to try to positively change other people's lives. I think I think you're doing that in, in your gym as well and um, do you feel like based on your upbringing and how, how tough it was where you grew up and how you grew up, do you feel like you have a responsibility to give back? Not, not specifically to your neighborhood maybe, uh, but to kids that you may run into that you see something in that you know may come from a similar experience that you did. Do you feel like you have that, that responsibility to give back? Um, maybe, but, but it's more of seeing things in the streets. You know, I, I graduated in 06 from Central High School and, um, 
once uh, my my grandma used to live on on Belmont. Sure. You know, so I'm 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 outside, you know, just hanging around, whatever, you know, getting some fresh air in the summer, and I, and I look to my left, and there, there's this girl. I'm like, she looks so familiar, like familiar, familiar, familiar. And I was like, oh my god, that's I went to school with her. Notice, noticed her, and I. I went to say hi and I stepped back. I said, "Listen, this this girl's on drugs." So um, and it gives me kind of like chills because it's hard to see somebody you know you know you went to school with and stuff like that and, and not doing very well in sure. life. So I tell you what, if I see her again, I think I might help her out. You know, it's just those things you see in the streets. Yeah, you know, it's just, sometimes it those are the things me. that tug at your heart. Yeah, I, I, you don't you don't know their story. People will be like, oh, they push them away, like get a job. But you really don't know the story. You don't know if, you know, their parents died. You don't know if their grandparents died. Yeah. They can't go anywhere. You know, but like I said, I, I'm a tough guy in the ring, but I have a heart of outside course you of do. it. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm very emotional. And that's person. one of the, that's one of the biggest reasons that, you know, when I first met you, I was drawn to you. And when I got this thing started, I wanted to have you in because I know that I know where your heart is. And I also know how hard you work and how, how much uh, time attention and energy you've spent investing in this journey i know on on you know on behalf of of the folks here through through the podcast and the stuff that i'm doing through donnie at seven roads and dylan at cloud nine we wish you uh, nothing but continued success i want to give everybody a quick rundown of where you can find julio um and whether or not you live in uh, massachusetts or northern connecticut those of you folks that are listening all across the country uh, i know that um even though Julio doesn't have a real active presence on Facebook because he's he's training a lot, he does have uh, his business partner and, and manager that uh, will take a look at um, the Facebook if you all send him messages. But let me give you a rundown of where you can find him. Uh, again, it's Julio Rivera on Facebook. You can find he and his gym at Old School Boxing in Enfield, Connecticut. On Instagram, you can look them up at Old School Boxing 88 on IG. Uh, the address to the old school boxing gym is 95 High Street, Enfield, Connecticut. It's in the Molinas Plaza. And if you want to reach out to Julio personally, he was good enough to share his personal IG with us. It's DRW underscore 15 underscore RW. Uh, again, DRW underscore 15 underscore RW. That's Julio's uh, personal email. From the bottom of my heart, uh, Ian, I want to thank you for being here. Um, thank truly, you, thank you. Yeah, truly appreciate it. I wish you well. Uh, and for you, my friend, I, I know we'll see plenty more of each other. I am more than excited to see where the journey goes for you. <laughs> and, and I wish you continued success, not just with the gym, uh, with your pro career, but also as the type of father and man you are. I appreciate uh, in, that. Thank you. And raising your son. Uh, as always, folks, you've been listening to another episode of Win Today with Johnny Martin. We look forward to hearing uh, your comments, your questions, and your suggestions. Uh, as you as you find us on all forms of social media, be good to those you love. Let them know you love them. Again, another episode of Win Today. Be good. Thank you to Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget, win today.